and say thank you for joining us. Good evening. I see uh, I see several students, several athletes, uh, former coaches, teachers, administrators, friends, family, loved ones, and so thank you very much for coming out today to help dedicate uh, this day and this wonderful statue and um, tree and, and bench to Brad. And I want to give a special thank you to the Booster Club, uh, Coach Bass. Amy Parker and Beth Bacon for, for making this happen. This is uh, really quite special, and it's quite special that all of you are, are able to be here today. Um, we're going to hear from a few speakers today. I'll get it kicked off, but it, it should be pretty brief, so don't, uh, don't get too worried. Um, Our sport is your sport's punishment, is something that's often said about cross country. And I, I think many of us have heard that. But I think you all know, those of you who are runners or those of you who have been involved in running, that cross country and running is much more than a punishment. And to Coach Hendrickson and his fellow coaches, many of whom are here tonight, I want to recognize Coach Charlotte, who is also a student. Uh, we want to see Coach Christ is here. Is Coach Fletcher here? Coach Barry. Coach Barry. Coach Fletcher is here. The Godfather, Coach Barry, is here. He's not just Coach Barry, he's the original Godfather, the OG. Ask him about that later. Go get your prize. Um, running was much more than, it's much more than a sport. It's a, uh, it's a way of life. And I think if you went through this program, hopefully that was ingrained on you. Um, more than, than being a sport in which to compete, and I think Dunwoody has more than its share of fame and uh, established a, a rich legacy in running, especially with some of the recent, recent wins we've had this year. Congratulations, everyone. Um, it's it's really about uh, perseverance, it's about commitment, and it's about exploration of the depths of your passions and abilities. Um, you may not realize it, but part of the program is to really ingrain that in you, more so than, than any of the skills you would have as a runner or lowering your times. Um, I should probably put my glasses on so I can leave this, excuse me. Um, this is the mindset, I think, the running mindset that all of the coaches I listed here and many who aren't here today, Coach Zimmerman, Coach uh, uh, Boucher, um, and, and several others that were here even before me, really tried to, t tried to teach the kids. And I think it can be traced back, um, quite frankly, not just to Coach Barry, but to Brad himself. And I think Brad, more than anyone, Coach Hendrickson, uh, really carried the Dunwoody High School flag uh, higher and more prominently than, than anybody else in most everything he did. And he'd be really proud to see everyone here today. Um, much of the program that you experience comes from his mind and, and his bottomless heart, frankly. Um, he started at Dunwoody High, like some of the students here, as a student himself. He became uh, a wonderful student, mostly. Uh, a fantastic athlete on the cross country team, and then he became a teacher and a fantastic coach as well. And many of you know, last year he was inducted into the Hall of Fame as a coach for some of his wonderful accomplishments with this cross country team and and the um, track team as well. Some of you remember him as a teacher, and you knew he had an unlimited reservoir of kindness and dedication and perseverance. Um, it's we just passed the two year mark when he passed and he passed the pancreatic cancer, which was both sudden in, in many ways and rather painful. Yet he taught nearly every day, most of you may remember that, um, until two days before he passed. But what he did mostly in those days for me was to demonstrate an amazing fortitude, tolerance, and most of all that self-exploration that I mentioned earlier and examination all behaviors that I think we can take anywhere in life, and I think he strived to teach his kids, both in the classroom and on the field, as a way to approach whatever you face later on. So um, I'm really proud to know that, to say that I know him, and to say that um, he was able to teach this to many, to many kids. And I think Thursday, uh, Friday, is a very big day, and hopefully those are lessons that um, you guys will carry with you when you, uh, both the boys and girls team, for um, the first time in about 10 or 15 years, make, make it to state and run. So please know that um, 
all of our love and our support of the folks here at, uh, will be with you. And I would say that uh, I'm certain that Coach Hendrickson will be there as well, and he'll make your feet feel a little lighter, and I'm sure he'll be causing the wind to be at your back. In closing, I just want to say one more thing that running gives you, and perhaps it's already given some of the runners here that today, uh, and some of the students here, but it gives you friendship. There are a few bonds a person can have that are closer than they can with a fellow runner. I was blessed with that with Brad, and um, though he's no longer here physically, I still have that with him, even when I go running by myself. And I hope that the, the plaque we have here will be a reminder for folks that, uh, of those feelings and that love for your fellow runner, for your friends, for your student, whatever it might be, when you can come down here to the statue and maybe have a seat and think about him or some of your, your friends. And, and I thank the Booster Club for making this happen. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Charlotte, Coach Davis for a, a brief moment. She wasn't uh, necessarily planned, but I think she has a wonderful perspective as both a former student and a coach. Thanks, Coach Elliott. I appreciate it. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. It's really great to see so many familiar faces, um, so many current students, students I had the honor and privilege of being able to coach, uh, and then so many parents who supported us, and faculty, staff, and coaches, too, who were part of the whole journey. Um, as Coach Elliott mentioned, um, we've kind of all had a, a long two years to really reflect on Coach Hendrickson um, and, and what he meant to us and to the community. And I think I, I really do feel so fortunate because I was just jotting down some memories um, the other day in anticipation of this. And I really, why I feel so fortunate is because I had memories for literally half of my life with Coach Hendrickson. And what I mean by that is when I started uh, as a cross-country runner here my freshman year, I had Coach Barry, and um, before my sophomore year, he said, hey, we're going to have two new coaches join us, and we're really going to expand our program, and I was all in. Like, this, this, like I, you didn't need to tell me anymore, and one of those coaches was Coach Hendrickson, um, and he was just phenomenal, and I latched on to anything that the coaches said I would do. It really didn't matter. I just, I believed in it so much. Um, and I had uh, Coach Hendrickson as a teacher too, which was difficult because it involved math. Um, <laughs> but it, um, I, and one of the memories that I had um, thinking back, um, one of the teachers, a, a veteran teacher in her own right, who's no longer here, but Miss Myers, I know many folks will remember Miss Myers, was a home ec teacher. In my uh, second semester senior year, while I was running track here, Coach Hendrickson was the head coach of track as well. Um, we had this project, and I guess it was supposed to get us life ready. Um, and you would, you were given an egg, like a literal egg, um, for a week, and you had to carry this egg around everywhere you went. And one of the, one of the catches was the teacher responsibility. You know, you get points deducted if your egg was cracked by the end of the week. And so I had this whole backstory for the egg, and gave her a name, and she did all the same things. And one of the things, though, that Ms. Myers instructed us on was, you cannot leave your egg without an adult, without a guardian, if you have to go off. So I had track practice every afternoon, and I was a little worried about it at first because I was taking this assignment so seriously. So I was like, okay, well, who's the most responsible person I know? It's Coach Henderson. So I brought my egg down Monday after practice. It was like, hey, Coach, I really need you to stay with my egg. Like, you don't need to do anything, but I got this form, and my grade is writing on it, and we've got to have, you know, an adult guardian signature on this form to turn in by Friday. He was like, okay, that's fine. And so I go run my two laps to start, and I remember this distinctly. Um, I was getting ready to finish. I was like coming through the second lap, just like warming up. And I see Coach Hendrickson standing like at the start line with my egg, which I'd had a carrier. Again, whole backstory. She, she had a whole travel kit, but had, had the egg at his feet. And I run over and I said, Coach Henderson, I told you you didn't have to do anything. I just needed you to sign the form. And I remember this. He said something to the effect of, well, I'm not going to put my name next to something if I don't do it right. And it just struck me. And it struck me again this week thinking about um, just being back with y'all and everyone. And it was a silly project. And I could have gone on. I could have gotten an A probably if the egg had 
you know, still been left over here. But the bigger point is that that was how Coach Henderson lived every aspect of his life. Uh, he wasn't going to put his name by it unless he did it right. And it transferred to his classroom. It transferred certainly to every academic pursuit he touched here, both as a student and a coach. Uh, and it also impacted and directly touched every single one of us that were fortunate to know him as a friend uh, and to know his family as well, which is um, a beautiful extension of that same type of living. None of y'all Hendricksons do anything unless you do it to the full. And um, I think the biggest thing in that is we've, we've talked about this a lot and Elliot mentioned it too, but it's impossible to talk about Dunwoody across time the whole school without really dealing with the legacy piece. And I think Coach Henderson is just, and everything that he lived out, um, it really speaks to the legacy. I mean, all of us two years later are still here, still trying to live out um, the same principles that he taught us or we were able to be a benefactor of. So uh, I'll close by saying I don't ever remember leaving Coach Henderson's class without some homework. <laughs> so uh, my homework here is that um, obviously we all care about the Double legacy, the high school and the community but particularly for our current students and athletes, especially as we're looking forward to our big state competition this week. Um, I would just encourage you all and give you a, a long-term homework assignment. Really think about what you're doing every day and how that impacts your legacy, because it's very likely that in 10, 15 years, you still have the same friend group in one way or another. You still come back to this community. And I know that this legacy is still going to be going strong, and I'm so grateful that we're all able to share the huge part that Coach Henderson played in that. Thank you. I'll turn it back. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, if you uh, don't recognize me, I don't entirely blame you. Um, this is my uh, fourth year here, and uh, I have the, the, the privilege of being the head coach of the um, uh, Dunwoody Cross Country <laughs> team right now. And um, when I um, got the message that we were doing this, uh, I wanted to make sure that I um, had a chance to just say a few things about uh, Coach Hendrickson and what we're doing here today. <clears throat> uh, for many years, Brad Hendrickson served this community. Uh, every day he worked to better the lives of those fortunate enough to know him. He did so with empathy, humility, and authenticity. Uh, we're here today at the place of his work to dedicate a piece of it to him and the impact that he had on so many. This is a necessary thing to do uh, so that this community will always remember what he did here. But in another way, this place has already been dedicated. Through the work that Brad Hendrickson did here, he dedicated this place to the commitment of bettering those around us. It's not so much of what we do here today, but what he did here every day that makes this place so special. In turn, I believe it's up to us to dedicate ourselves to the best of our abilities to continuing his work of enriching the lives of our families, our friends, and our communities so that we may remember and honor him for all the great work that he did here. Thank you. I want to um, open what I'm going to say about our good friend Brad Hendrickson by quoting a passage of scripture from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I think that no matter what a person's faith is, uh, the analogy between life and surviving and enduring life struggles and running, running a race, is something that we all can relate to. All of us know that Brad loved running, and there are two types of sporting events that involve running. One involves running a quick race, where the goal is speed, and most track and field events fall into this category. But then there's marathons or a cross-country meet, where endurance is important, if not more important, that speed is. When I think about Brad, both of his love of running and the struggle that he endured the last month of his life, one story that, I, that, that struck me really at the time of his passing um, that keeps coming to my mind was a story I heard one time about a marathon runner in the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City. Um, I confess I needed to refresh my memory of the, the story. It had been a long time since I've heard it, and I found it on a website, official website for the Olympics. I'm going to read part of that to you. John Stephen Aquari was a marathon runner who represented Tanzania in the marathon in 1968. He didn't win a medal. In fact, he came nowhere near. But in defeat, 
and in pain, he found something much more profound and enduring than many sportsmen achieve in an illustrious career. John Stephen Aquari was never likely to win the men's marathon that year, but his chances were wrecked when perhaps because of the effects of the high altitude, he succumbed to cramps that slowed his progress. If that was painful, then worse was to come after he was involved in a melee of athletes jockeying for position. Aquari fell to the ground, gashing his knee and also causing a dislocation. He also smashed his shoulder against the pavement. Most observers, seeing his injuries, assumed he would pull out and go to a hospital. Instead, he received medical attention and returned to the track to continue the race. His pace, of course, was much slower, but his resolve to complete the event remained intact. 18 of the 75 starters had pulled out. He did not wish to add to that number. And so more than an hour after the winner, Tanzania's Aquari crossed the line in last place, cheered home by a few thousand spectators who had remained in the stadium after the sun went down. The medals had already been awarded. By the time he reached the stadium, he was limping and the bandage around his leg was flapping in the breeze. He was asked why he carried on, and his response has gone down in sporting history. My country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race, he said. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. You know, when I first started here, both me and my wife, Emily at Dunwoody in the late 1990s, we had become good friends with a science teacher that was somewhat of a legend of herself, too, and very special to Brad, Barbara Broadway. She was one of the veteran teachers at DHS that had been here forever, since shortly after the school was opened, I think, in the 1970s. And as Barbara got closer to retirement, she talked a lot about a bright former student of hers that she hoped would take her place at Dunwoody when she left and take over AP chemistry from her. That bright young man was Brad. And it came to pass that everything fell into place for Brad to come back home to DHS as a science teacher. While AP physics, more than chemistry, became his calling, my memory serves me correctly, he bailed us, bailed me as the person over the schedule out by teaching AP chemistry uh, one semester when the teacher left in the fall prior to that course being taught. Barbara passed away a little before Brad, and I remember at the time when Brad passed, I'd like to imagine that she was one of the first people to welcome him home. Brad was such a dedicated teacher. He cared very passionately about his students, the curriculum, and that his students were taught correctly. And even if you weren't a science person, Brad could adjust how he explained things so that a lay person could understand them. I remember one time we were having to replace our heating and air in my house and the salesman from the company was trying to sell us on a heat pump. I had no idea how that worked. So I went to Brad because I actually had a class that met in his room during his planning period then, and he simplified the physics for me. I still couldn't quite get it, so then basically he drew a picture for me. But he explained it to me, and the point I'm trying to make is whether you were an AP physics or AP chemistry student, or someone like me that needed a picture drawn for them, Brad had a real gift to explain science in a way you could understand it. He enjoyed teaching, and he loved to watch knowledge of science click with his students. He cared so much about each and every one of his students. He never was one who wanted to be out from work. He wanted to be in the classroom because he enjoyed the teaching and learning process so much, and he wanted to be there to make certain that his students were taught correctly. And every student athlete that he ever coached said the same of his dedication and devotion on the track or the cross-country course. When Brad first became ill, he came into the office to see me, and he was going to be out for a little while for a procedure. And all of us knew that he was a very private person, and he did not want to share a lot of personal details or draw a lot of attention to himself. He was such a humble man who wanted to serve other people in as low-key a way as possible. He didn't tell me what his exact condition was, but he told me enough about what was going on, the nature of the procedure and so forth, and I put it together that it was cancer and what type it probably was and what he was fighting. And that conversation and in others over the remainder of that winter, spring and fall when we came back to school, Brad never showed anything but determination and a positive outlook. I remember one conversation that I had with him on the phone right before school started back in the fall and he was talking about how good the summer had been. 
Um, he still wanted to be at school teaching his students. He certainly could have taken medical leave, uh, but he was so determined to be at school to teach his students. The last time I saw Brad, I believe was earlier in the week before he passed away, and he told me that he wanted to work as long as he could, but he didn't know how much longer that would be. Yes, he was still coming to work to teach his students. Like John Stephen Akwari, it wasn't enough for Brad to run the race. He was determined to finish the race, and he did. He never gave up, he never surrendered, and he devoted himself to his students until he could no longer do so, and he passed away several days later. Brad's humility, strong work ethic, and devotion to his students, both in the classroom and on the track, and the cross-country course are an example to all of us in how to challenges that we face in life. He is a hero to all of us, colleagues and students, for this reason. One last thing I want to share with you about our friend Brad was that he was fond of a quote of John Wesley. Um, kind of a history nerd like me, John Wesley was a priest in the Church of England in the 1700s, but he became the father, what most consider the father of most Methodist Christian denominations that exist today. And he had a lot of good quotes and advice on how people should conduct themselves. And I believe Brad was very fond of one of John Wesley's quotes in particular. Do all the good that you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. Brad Hendrickson truly lived his life that way. We are also lucky to have known Brad as a colleague, a teacher, or coach. There is so much good that he did in his life. Such a good example to all of us. And the best way we can honor him is to live by his example. Our friend Brad has fought the good fight, he has finished the race, and he kept the faith. Hello, I'm uh, Danielle Hendrickson, Brad's wife, and I had to laugh about um, his privacy. Many of you probably didn't know, some of the runners were like, you're married, and he sent me a picture one time of, he's like, see, so you're in my room, and it was like above his door frame, and I was on the coast, and I was itty bitty, but that was Brad, and I loved him all with more for that. But thank you, Elliot, um, Jack, and Andy, um, and Charlotte, you guys are all really important people in his life. Um, and you did so much all along the way for us. As Elliot said, two years is a long time and it feels different. And I imagine that every year the sadness will feel different. Um, for me this year, it was kind of in the simple things, just the day-to-day, -day, the mundane things we would do together that I find myself missing them. Um, last year I was doing this project and it had a little bit of physics in it. And I was like, I just need to ask him one question and I know he'd be able to simplify it. Um, so yes, you can kind of imagine our dinner conversations as a math and physics teacher, uh, very riveting. Um, and he often told me I was a terrible student because I didn't listen, which is true. <laughs> but to really come here today um, together and recognize him during this time um, with this dedication is really special to me. Brad, of course, would never have wanted any of this. Um, certainly not his shoes bronzed, uh, which he would never want anyone to touch, his nasty running shoes that I did wash before I gave to Amy, um, or words on a plaque. He was happy just to get the new Dunwoody Cross Country t-shirts that he could wear uh, until they were had holes and pitted out, so to speak, and wear them even longer, of course, with his khaki shorts. But that makes it even more special. Um, it's certainly something he never would have sought or expected. He would somehow, if he was here, turn the attention to you all and just say that you were the reason for all the greatness that he had. Work hard, listen, give your best, leave places better than you found them, leave people better than you found them, be kind. Isn't that what he did? In his little sphere of influence of this community and this school, he left this world a better place and us better people. There are those here that knew him well and feel the heaviness of his absence every day. And there's those that have just heard stories. He was humble, never looking for recognition. He simply loved Dunwoody High School, his students, his runners, teaching and coaching, but certainly his humility and kindness spread through the community. 
So when I think about each of these special memorials, as beautiful as they are, I try to think about them through Brad's eyes. The tree that was donated by Dunwoody High School behind us. Uh, Brad loved outside and just nature in general. He once told me he would never take a teaching job if it didn't have a classroom. True story. He's like, he had to see outside. He just really appreciated all the beauty that God's given to us freely. Rain, shine, snow, it didn't matter. He loved being outside. You could certainly find him running no matter what the weather. The bench that the Mamagani family has given us, a place of rest. Of course, if, with your, if you're with Brad, you know you're not resting very long. Um, but do take time to slow down, enjoy life, the simple things that come our way, and give thanks for those people and those experiences. And lastly, his shoes. I think of walking in the imprint that they can leave, the imprint that Brad left on all of us. You never know the impact that you will leave on somebody. What you say, do, and how you treat others matters. So thank you, all of you that are here, to help make this such a special place and a tribute to Brad. My hope is that as students, faculty, and community, that as you pass the memorial, you'll remember him, share a story, or feel and be reminded of the goodness in the world and the goodness that you can be for others. Let's honor Brad not only with the memorial, but by carrying forward his legacy of love and kindness wherever we go. Thank you. Hi, I'm gonna finish up the evening for us. My name is Beth Bacon. I have three children. My two daughters had the privilege of having Brad as their cross country coach all four years of high school. They also both were in Brad's physics class their junior year. My son was able to have Brad as his cross country coach for his first season of cross country. I am here speaking today as a representative of the Dunwoody High School Cross Country Booster Club. I spoke with my daughters this past week about Brad and their time in his class and on the cross country team. Their time with Brad in class was virtual during COVID and they both said Coach Hendrickson continued to take his job seriously and talk through the material effectively in a difficult teaching situation. They both learned a lot from him as a teacher. In talking through their time on the cross country team, my daughters had several things to share about Coach Hendrickson. One of my daughters said that Coach Hendrickson at meets would go further out than anyone else, always find the most barren, remote part of the cross country race course. And my daughter would be running the race and just starting to think, okay, I might could get away with walking a little bit here. And then out would pop Coach Hendrickson to motivate her and his other runners. It would startle her at times and she would, sorry, hold on a minute, uh, startle her at times and she would pick up the pace. She was describing all of this while laughing because this apparently was a thing with Coach Hendrickson at a race and you never knew where he was going to pop up. My daughter uh, said Coach Hendrickson was extremely humble and lived to serve others. He was a positive person and positive as a coach and created a healthy environment on the team. Team cohesiveness was specifically mentioned as part of that healthy environment. They said he developed a love for running in teenage high school kids, which is something that gave the high school students a skill and passion that they would have for a lifetime. My daughter said that Coach Hendrickson gave these group pep talks before races. They said he had a way in those pep talks of making you feel like you wanted to race slash run like you had never run before. My daughter said Coach Hendrickson lived out what it meant to work hard in life, set high standards for yourself and others, and never draw attention to yourself. As a parent, it is meaningful to me to hear my still young 20-year-old daughter speak about their coach and teacher and the deep impact he had on them and others. I am thankful for the role model they had in Brad and the ongoing impact it has had in their lives. In Ephesians 4.32, it says to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, graciously forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has graciously forgiven you. Brad lived that out in how he treated high school teens and in his interactions with us as parents. Today we are here to pay tribute to Brad's life and his impact on us with this monument area. The shoe sculpture and plaque were given from the cross country team's memorial fund. The bench, so the um, 
The shoe sculpture is over here, so please come and look at it when we're done. The bench was donated by the Mamagani family. It is on the other side of the brick wall over here, so please come and look at it. The um, tree is a Japanese maple. It was donated by Dunwoody High School, and I believe it's contracted to be taken care of um, through the city for about a year to give it a good start. Um, the school wanted me to point out that it is going to look better. It is just <laughs> recently planted. Um, it can't be pruned yet. Um, it's going to be purple as it grows and gets bigger. Um, the Dunwoody High School Booster Club would like to take this time to recognize Brad's family that are in attendance today. So when I call your name, would you please come up and just receive a bouquet of flowers and, um, and then you can go back in the crowd. So Danielle, we will start with you. If you could walk over to Lucy here, she will hand you a bouquet. Uh, Georgiana, Brad's mother, if you could come forward and get a bouquet, that would be wonderful. And Jeff, Brad's brother, if you could step up, that would be greatly appreciated. And Jeannie, Brad's sister, if you could come up, we would like to hand one to you as well. With Allie, yes. Thank you. On behalf of the Dunwoody High School Booster Club, we would like to officially dedicate the shoe sculpture, bench, and tree in honor of Brad Hendrickson. Thank you to all that have attended today. Please go out and work hard in life, <laughs> set high standards, be humble, and consider the words of Ephesians 4.32 and being kind and forgiving to others. Thank you again.